Okay, so oh, let me turn on my mic. That's a little more. That's a little heavy. There we go. All right, how is the music and the mic combo? Because something may have happened. Whoops, hold on. Wrong one. There we are. Pushing all the buttons. Hi. Um, I have a little bit of an issue. One of my mom's dogs took the coating for my mic. So how does my mic sound? Is it okay? Is it is it sound okay? Uh, hey Doug, hey Minion Mama, hey Capes, hey Nikki. How are you guys today? Uh, also crazy, thank you so much for that resub. I super appreciate you. And thank you for so much for the host, Marin. I appreciate you too. You think it sounds fine? Okay. So the, for those of you that don't know, the, um, the little cover that goes on top of mics, it is to, base, it's like a pop cap. It's to help with wind and with your hard S's. So it's a touch low. Really? Touch low? It looks like it's almost heating up whenever I look at the mic. Because I look at my levels and I'm in the yellow right now. You sure it's low? You sure it's not just your sound on your computer, Doug? Um, yes, I know I could so win. For everyone else that's not Doug, is the is it fine? I, haven't, I didn't do anything, Minion Mama. Um, so is the levels okay? Is the, uh, the sound level? Is that okay? Can, you, is, can everyone else hear me okay? Or does everyone else agree that it's too quiet and I have to turn it up? It's fine? Okay. All right, Doug, turn your volume up. <laughs> okay. I was making sure that, I, that somebody else says something about the mic levels before I move on to the actual quilt along. Because I want to make sure you can hear me, right? Make sure you can hear me, you can see me, you can understand, do all the things. We've got it. Uh, I played with the camera angles a bit. Hey, Kraken Bean. I played with camera angles a bit, so then this way you can actually see what's going on right here. Fantastic. Thanks, Capes. So, Doug, it's you. Um, so, I've got that, I've got that. I also have, as you see, I've fixed the camera, so I've got the right the right um, camera view, so you can see what's going on here and here. Uh, I basically played around with a bunch of things. I played around with a bunch of the stuff, so so we can do it. When I turn my head, what, when I turn my head that way? Okay. So you're saying put it in the center, so that no matter how I turn my head, you can hear me, right? Is that what you're saying? Put the mic in the center? So that's the difference? Yes. Yeah, no backwards numbers. That's great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. So that was the issue because I had it over here. So I guess put it here because then if I do this, you can't. Yeah, you can't hear me. Awesome. Okay. You ready to get going? You ready to do the quilt along? All right. So first off, don't forget, we want to take all of... All right, who wants to guess what I forgot this week? I swear I had everything together. I swear I had it all. I really do need a babysitter. I need a babysitter to make sure that I, I do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I forgot something. Something I need right now. No, no, I got the pins. I got the pins. I didn't forget those this week. I've got the, um, yeah, I don't have the pattern. I've been bringing my iPad and then reading off the iPad, but I don't have the iPad. So you know what I'm going to do? We're going to bring it on our phone. <laughs> so, yes, but the computer's way over there, Minion Mama. I can't keep going back and forth all the way over there to here. Yeah, so I forgot my tablet. I forgot my tablet for that. So, all right, so we're going to pull it off of my phone. All right, so quilt along. Master Files, this is block number 10, Light Mage, got it. There we go, it is on my phone. I'm ready to go. Yes, but I, yes, it's on any computer. There's only a single computer here at the wrong location at the quilt shop and it's all the way across the room so I can't keep going back and forth so I can't put it on the computer. 
So luckily, with the PDF documents, you can, up, you can upload it to your Google Drive, which is what I do, and you can access it anywhere, so you're fine. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, Nikki, thanks. Nope, it's not, a phone, it's not a problem. I've got it on Google Drive, and so I've got it on my phone. So it's not a problem. All right, um, I have a checklist, Minya Mama. It doesn't work. Okay, so this is the one we're doing today. We are doing the Light Mage. So the first thing you want to do is take all of your blocks. Make sure you've got those. Take all your fabrics. All right, so let's grab our fabrics. Today we need white. Okay, here's white. Yes. It is, oh yeah, no, these aren't, these aren't computers, these are phones. Um, yes, no, and I do, I forgot my checklist. That's the problem. That is the problem. All right, next is black. Black, I've got that. Next is red. I've got red. And then tan. Tan. Uh-oh, we don't have much tan left. Is it gonna be like last week where we, uh, we used just a little bit left? We used the last little bit left? Fantastic, okay, so we've got all of our colors. I'm gonna take these, set these aside. Fantastic, now let's pull previous strips. So if this block is being made as part of the quilt, use the following strips from previous blocks and do not cut additional strips of them. Adventure, hero's block, he's right on top. Let's grab him. I need the tan, which is right here. Okay, I've got my tan. And plumber hero, plumber hero. Nope, that's all I need from him. And then I need my plumber hero. There we go. Plumber hero, all the way on the, of course he's on the bottom. Of course, the two's, oh, nice minion mama, that's awesome. Getting quilts done is always an amazing thing. Okay, so we need the red. There we go, I've got the red. And then I need the red tanned combined strip. Let's find that. Here it is, the red tan. And do I have any, oh, I do have a single little piece of the red tan. Is there any other pieces of the red tan? No, okay. And then I need the black tan. Well, right, right away there's my little piece. So let's find the combined strips of the black and tan. Perfect, here it is right here. And we've got that, wonderful, okay. All right, and that's all we need from previous blocks. And that's all you can do with quilt alongs. It's just one step at a time. And that's really what it is. I had people that are like, well, I'm behind on this quilt along. Well, that's fa fine. That's why I'm putting these videos on YouTube, so you can go back and rewatch them anytime you like. Okay, let's do the next part. So now we are cutting. Okay, so let's flip this back over so I can start with white first. There we are. Now for white, we need one, two and a half, and two, one and a half. Yes, I'm actually gonna turn it sideways to make it easier to read. Um, okay, so one, two and a half, two, one and a half. Now, do we need anything? Am I cutting them all? Tan, red, okay, and then tan, nope. Okay, so I'm making sure I'm cutting those. I'm gonna be using my stripology ruler if you would like to get a stripology ruler of your own, they do sell them at your local quilt or sewing store. If they do not carry them, they are able to order them for you. Um, if they are here in the US, they can order them from Checker. Anywhere else in the world, they can just contact their distributor and they'd be able to get them. It is a fantastic tool that I love. In fact, let me show you the close-up of how it works. So I'm just gonna lay my stripology ruler right here. Oh, this specific one? Yeah, so this is the stripology square up. You're right, I do need to add that one. Um, it is a smaller version of the large one that you see with the link right there. 
So all I'm doing is I'm taking my 12 inch line, I'm lining it up at the top. And then of course you wanna square it up. So cut off the end right here to square that up. And then I'm cutting one, two and a half, and two one and a halves. And just that quickly, I'm done. And I have my strips. So there's my two and a half, and there's my one and a half, and it's finished. And it is that easy in order to cut it. So let's go back to that one while I finish cutting the rest, because that's why I changed the camera angle so you can see them. All right, so black. Black, we need two and three. Well, I have that. Nope, it doesn't say anything about not cutting any additional blacks. So we're cutting them all. Here we are. Oh, and it looks like I've got a fold right here. So let me iron that out. Nice and straight. There we go. All right. So black, I need two, two and a halves. Let's square it up. One, two, and then three one and a halves. One, two, three. Perfect. Good morning, Kabuki. How are you today? All right, I don't need black anymore. I'm gonna take my one and a half, set them aside. Take my two and a halves, put them up there. Fantastic. Okay, so tan. Oh, red, I'm sorry, red is next. Now red, it says don't cut the two and a half because I've already pulled it. I have it right here that I pulled from a previous block. So we're not cutting the red. Uh, so we only need two one and a halves for the red. So let's cut those. Thank you, Nikki. Nikki just sent the link for the cutter I'm using. I am using a Martelli specialty rotary cutter. It is a fantastic rotary cutter that actually helps with your wrist strain because it's a natural, you keep your wrist flat like this. Um, you can get it through corset props with a, how big of a discount is that? 10% off, 10% off for both the cutting blade, the, um, the rotary cutter and the blades. Uh, I am in the process of getting affiliated with Martelli, so if you wanted to get anything else like the cutting mat or anything like that, you can, if you can wait, I would appreciate it. And then you can get a coupon code for those as well. Okay, tan. Last but not least, it says don't cut the two and a half. We already have it. Remember, we pulled it from previous blocks. Good morning, Lego. How are you today? And then do not cut an inch and a half. So, nope, so we don't have to cut any tan. So I don't even need this little strip of tan right here. We've got everything. And that's all of what we need. Okay, so from the one and a half inch strips, cut in half, one white, one, oops, only one white, one red, one tan, which we didn't have to cut, so we don't have to worry about that, and one black. Okay, so let's cut these in half. If I can find my scissors all the way over here off camera. There we are. No, I'm cutting them here like this. So you find where the fold is and then cut them in half. Do not cut down here or else you're gonna cut it in quarters. And that's not what you want. You want the entire strip in half. So instead of a 42 inch strip, you're gonna have a 21 inch strip. There we are. Okay, let's set those aside because next is the two and a half inch strips. So let's go ahead and change the camera angle. So then that way you can see what I'm doing with this. All right, so we are doing the two and a half inch strips. So from the white fabric, 
first thing I want to do is iron this. Because I have a fold in here, just like that. Let's get that ironed. And before I forget, I, I have been asked by a few people, what are we going to do with all the scraps? Because this quilt, unfortunately, is one of those quilts that does leave a decent number of scraps afterwards. So what we're going to do is a very special stream in the month of November just with those scraps. So I am partnering with an amazing, fantastic author who has got an amazing scrap quilt book. And, and you will, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to do something together. It's fantastic. Uh, just wait until you get more information. You're going to be excited. OK, so white. We need three four and a halfs. Remember, I'm doubling it up. I'm cutting my strip in half. So I'm actually cutting it by twos. So four and a half nine, so that's four, and then two and a half. So I'm just gonna move my whole thing, take one of these, set that aside. With the white, don't forget, make sure that you, you automatically put, oh yes, and that code for the iron does work on the new mini iron. Um, for the white, if you decide to use the white that I recommend with the Toscana line from um, Northcott, Make sure that your fabric is face up. It is a, it's hard to tell the right side on that fabric, but there is a right side. And if you, you're not careful, you may have the wrong side up in your quilt and then you won't like it later on. Okay, how many two and a halfs do I need? I need seven. So two, four, six, eight. And then five, two, four, six, seven. Let's get all of the right sides up. And then I need seven. So I am gonna have to cut that one down there. So I need five, I'm sorry, five one and a halfs. So there's two. And this is a four and a half. She, she, the whole thing. Three, four, and then the fifth one is there. So I just have a single two and a half inch block left. So I'll set that aside. There we are. Okay, my white is done. Let's move on to black. Now, with black, I have two strips that I cut. So because I cut two strips, I'm going to cut them both at the same exact time and save some time. So I'm actually going to be cutting four pieces at a time. And remember, this is a teaching stream. If you have any questions at all about what I am doing, about quilting or sewing in general, about this block, please, 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 please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. There we are. Okay, so I need eight four and a halfs. Well, it's great because I'm cutting in groups of four. So four and a half, nine is eight. I need nine two and a halfs. So I'm actually only gonna cut two groups because I'm cutting by fours. I don't wanna cut way too box. much. This is not a Girl November, this how are you today? And then the one and a half. I need 10 one and a halfs. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're wondering what is going on, another fellow Twitch streamer, the amazing, fantastic, awesome Girl November just raided us. So what does that mean? That means the Girl November just finished her stream 
and she decided to bring all of her amazing family and friends and community over here and introduce them to me. So hi guys. Uh, if you're coming in on the Grow November Raid, if you have not yet seen me before, I am Tony. Uh, I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. And right now we are in block number 10. 10 of our quilt along. Impistry, thank you so much for gifting Stream Elements that sub. Um, Nikki, can you please give Impistry 10 pixels, please, for that gift sub? I appreciate it. Remember, because if you gift my bots subs, you get the pixels. Um, so thank you very much for bringing in. So Grow November, what were you doing? What were you working on? I know it's no longer the uh, Tour de Fleece. Uh, I know that's over from a few weeks ago. So what are you working on now? And welcome everyone. So we are doing an official quilt along. This video is gonna be put up on YouTube so you can go back and rewatch the video and do the blocks if you like. So we're in the process of cutting our pieces right now. Ooh, the charity Afghan. Oh. So how close are you to finishing your, your All right, we are back. Uh, I apologize. So this is the problem sometimes with filming on location. So it is, and they do have business internet here, so it takes a while to reboot the system. So I did refresh, reboot the system. So thank you very much for sticking with me. I appreciate you. Uh, and I will cut and paste all of the videos so that if you decide to rewatch this video on YouTube later on, you won't have that weird, awkward connection issues. So fantastic. All right, so where we left off, please go follow Girl November. Uh, if you do uh, are interested in the amazing things that she does with yarn, um, with charity, with everything else, she's fantastic. I love her. Go to twitch.tv and search Girl November, and then she'll come right back up. So, yes. Yeah, yeah the, um, we do have two different, oh, I put my phone over there, and I forgot. I need it for my pattern. I need it for my pattern. Okay, so black. I've got that. I've got, let's see, the squares. I need nine squares. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So let's take one of our black squares out. Impostry, thank you so much for putting that in there. I did not know anything was wrong until I saw your message. So I appreciate it. And then I need 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Perfect. Got it. Okay, black is done. So we do have um, one more week of filming here on location. So we next week's quilt block will be from here as well. And then... In, um, two, in three weeks, because there's no stream in two weeks, in three weeks I am back home in my studio for the last two weeks of the quilt along. So very excited for that, to, go, to film back into the studio. But we are also going to be on location at Dragon Con. If you are a regular here at Twitch, you may or may not remember our cosplay bingo that we do at conventions. We are currently this week putting it all together. Uh, I should have it ready to go by Wednesday. So I will start publishing all of that. So if you're going to Dragon Con and you want to show up and be on camera, I will have my schedule at that point. Okay, so red. We need one, two and a half, and then one, one and a half. Okay. So we take one away from each of those because I only need one. Put my scrap over there and red over here. Okay, and then last but not least, tan. Tan, I need one two and a half, I've already got that, and one one and a half. So it will be a lot of fun, even if you're not used to Twitch, if you are interested in hanging out and having some fun, next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll be streaming some cosplay bingo. It is a, I, I love cosplay bingo. It is a lot of fun. Okay, so now let's combine our one and a half inch strips. So we need one white to one black. Let's make sure these are not my ones. Oh, they are the ones I cut in half. All right, so one white to one black. Perfect. A half white to a half red. So let's put my right side on top to a half red. Okay, 
Next is half red to half tan. Well, I've already got that because I pulled that from my previous strip. Half black to half tan. Well, I've got that because I pulled that from previous strips. Half black to half, and one black to one red. One black to one red. Uh-oh. I don't think I needed this other black strip. We cut an extra black strip that we didn't need. Uh, Nikki, will you do me a favor and shoot me a Discord message to take that to fix this pattern in the for the for the digital downloads of all the patterns? Because there's a bunch of minor things that I'm fixing, so that is one of them. So I'm going to take out and not cut one of the black strips. Okay, so that's fine. So let's set that aside. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. We're going to combine these strips, so let's go back to here and let's do some sewing. All right. Let's do some sewing. Oh, I don't need this. I can put that back up here ah, with my fabrics. These are my extras I can set aside over there, which are fine. So let's start combining. Now, whenever you're combining your strips, always make sure you do right sides to right sides. And I always shake my strips in order to make sure that I have them all the way out because if you, oops, you know what I just realized? I have the wrong foot. I don't have my quarter inch piecing foot in here. There we go. I was doing some binding and some dice bag assembly. There we go. All right, so it's super important. Perfect that you do right sides to right sides and then you shake this all the way down because you don't want to get any fabric caught up in there. It's not a good idea. The rest you're going to sew it. And I've, ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. Hi, Jan Bear. How are you today? Yeah, ask me how I know that you can totally just sew the wrong areas of your strips. Now, whenever you're sewing, I say to sew a quarter inch seam in the pattern. And you do want to sew a quarter inch seam. Whenever you get good at quilting, when, or quilting and sewing, whenever you see a quarter inch seam, you actually want to sew what's called a scant quarter inch seam. So scant. Maren, thank you so much, the host. I appreciate it. So a scant quarter inch seam means you're just barely sewing that quarter inch. So you take your quarter inch and then you want to make sure, there we are, let's make sure I've got the right sides, yes. You actually want to take your needle and go just to the right. Or in the case of this foot where I have my quarter inch piecing foot with the guide, I'm just barely not touching that piece of metal. So if you're using a quarter inch piecing foot with guide, normally if you're touching that piece of metal, you have a perfect quarter inch. You want to take it just to the left of that metal. Just barely not touch it. Now the reason, the reason, <laughs> I don't always sew the wrong sides together, but when I do, it's always at the end of the project. Nice girl November. That is awesome. That is fantastic. Thank you, Jan Bear. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, what's, what's the reason? Why do we sew a scant quarter inch instead of a quarter inch? Does anyone know? I, I keep forgetting to talk about this. So you may have missed it in previous streams. It's one of the things that I forget to talk about sometimes. Exactly, Nikki. The seam takes up the space. So whenever you're sewing, you're actually putting thread into it. Whenever you're putting the thread into your project, you're adding extra space to it. So you're actually taking away some of it from that, from that quarter inch seam. So you're actually sewing a little bit more than a quarter inch. If you want to get some perfect, perfect um, 
pieces and make sure your measurements are just right. So a scant quarter inch. Hey, Life is Christy, how are you? I just looked over, I'm like, ah, chap lips. Do I have my uh, chapstick? Sure enough, I do. Okay, we are done. Hold on to your batting for Another this. one. This is not a drill. The factory is <gasps> Alley cats. How are you? And for those of you on YouTube, you're used to this because we just got raided by um, Girl November. Now we just got raided by another amazing, fantastic fiber artist. The amazing, fantastic, awesome Alley Cat Fibers just raided us. She is a another um, yarn person. Um, so wait, so I, it's another person that was doing the Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece is done. So what were you doing? So Girl November was working on her Afghan. What were you doing today, Alley Cat? And again, if you are watching on YouTube, if you would like to take a look at Alley Cat Fibers, who again is an amazing, fantastic fiber arts streamer, you can go to twitch.tv in the search button, type Alley, A-L-I, Cat, Fiber is F-I-B-E-R, Arts. And once you find that, you can see her stream and you can give her a follow. So, fantastic life is Christy, that's awesome. And for those of you that just came in on the raid, if you have not yet seen me before, I'm Tony. I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. Uh, I travel around to conventions, stores, and guilds, teaching, lecturing, and selling my wares. I have my own line of patterns you can find in quilt stores around the world. And in the stream, you normally get quilting, sewing, giveaways, free things, and animals. But today, we are doing our quilt along. So this is our 10th week doing it. We are working on the light mage pattern you see right here. That's what we're making today. Complete start to finish in the stream, and then this is going on YouTube tomorrow so that people can, whenever people decide to make this block in the future, they can come back and see how it's made. So this is a teaching stream. So please feel free to ask any questions you like. You can ask questions on quilting. You can ask questions on this block specifically. But this is a teaching stream, and this is a tutor a special tutorial stream, meaning I am showing you step by step by step how I'm making this. All right, so let's do this. Oh, let's bring this over here. There we go. My cord was in my way. So what I'm just doing right there is I'm locking in my seams. Whenever we iron our strips, we want to make sure that we lock in our seams before we iron them open. <gasps> Ooh, you have a gallery show? That's awesome. Where is your gallery show going to be, Alley Cat? Is it, in other words, is it someplace that I can go see it or that I can tell people to go see it? Is the gallery show open to the public? That sounds awesome. There we are. Now, I ironed this strip towards my black. So my seam goes that way. So this next strip, so remember I cut these strips in half just like the pattern told me to. So that now the second half of the strip, I'm ironing it towards the red. And I locked in that seam by ironing it first. Now, the locking in the seams. Who remembers New Haven, Connecticut, right? Who remembers why we iron that first? Why we lock that seam in? What does it do? Okay, and then now I'm going to nest these seams. So I'm lining this up so it's perfectly done. And that, oops, that is nesting seams. So you see how that's going towards the red and that's going towards the black? If I were to put a pin in that and sew that, I would get a perfect seam because my seams perfectly match up. Prevent stretching, yes, exactly, Nikki. So we wanna lock those seams in to prevent the stretching and the movement of the fabric. You'll get more accurate cuts. You'll get better, um, more accurate cuts. You get better layouts, better everything. Basically, block in your seams, it's a good idea. Okay, red and black. 
we need one set of two and a half, and then five sets of one and a half. One, two, three, four. Okay, and the rest of this gets set aside. Okay, and that is trash. Now, whenever I open these up, so I'm going to take these and I'm going to actually split them into two separate piles. The reason is this pile, all my seams go towards the black. In this pile, all my seams go towards the red. So it allows me to easily pick up the piece that I need when I need it. So I'm just going to take these and set those aside. All right, so let's start from the top now. Uh, we need red and tan, which I already have right here. Red and tan, we need one set of two and a half, and that is it. So I don't need this piece right here. So let's cut this. And remember, this is already ironed and laid out from a previous block. If you are not making this block as part of the entire quilt, you do need to iron those pieces. Okay, then we need white and black, which is here. So let me set that aside so that we can iron these. All right, so let's iron it towards the white. So let's lock that seam in first. All right, here is my white. And then we're gonna iron this one towards the black. Because remember, we're ironing these in opposite directions. After we lock those seams in. So that way, we can have pieces cut both ways. There we are. Great, all right, let's line this up. Let's lock these seams. Let's make sure everything is lined up. It is. And how many do I need for white and black? Four sets. Four sets. So any questions on anything we've done so far from anyone? Perfect. And then we need seven sets of the one and a half. I'm trying to be better about describing it, how I, how I go, and I realize I forgot to count. <laughs> I forgot to count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm, okay. All right. Look at, look at me talking and not paying attention. Two, four, six. Okay. All right, I can get one more out of here. Seven, fantastic. There we go, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna split these. Yeah, I know. Hey, I do better and don't squirrel as much whenever I'm doing these streams. Normally I squirrel a lot more, but I'm able to concentrate and do this. There we go. Perfect. Okay, there's our white and our black. Next is our white and our red, which is right here. So let's lock these seams in. Yeah, if you think this is bad with me going all over the place, just watch a normal stream. There we are towards our red. and towards our whites. So let's all lock our seams. Perfect, oops, I went to sleep. All right, let's see, white, white and red. I need one set of two and a half. 
Okay, and then five sets of one and a half. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, making sure. See, I almost lost it again. Whew. All right, so one set and five sets, right? Yes. Three, four, five. I had somebody message me the other day saying, hey, I bought a kit from you and there's not enough fabric. I said, really? I didn't, uh, I didn't include enough fabric? And they said, no, I'm, I'm missing this. And I said, well, did you cut this many of this and this many of this? And she came back and said, no, I cut it wrong. I said, okay, well, luckily there's enough fabric in there. You can go back and this is how you use that fabric to fix it. And she goes, oh, okay, thank you. So luckily I didn't have to send them any additional fabric. All right, so here's our black and our tan, which we have two additional ones. So I need one set of two and a half. And one set of one and a half. There we are. And this is extra. Perfect. And there it is. We have all of our pieces cut out. All right, so let me take this and set this aside. Uh, Wild Zan, it does, yes. So this is an Oliso iron. It is a specialty iron that whenever I touch it, the feet come in and out. It's better on your wrist with strain. So for people like me that um, sew a lot and iron a lot, it definitely saves my wrist, so it is great. And in fact, I do have a 25% off coupon code for you if you want one for yourself. So yes, it's smarter than me too. I know, right? Um, yeah, so it's amazing. I, I love my Aliso irons, and they just came out with a travel one. It doesn't go up and down, but it's a pretty cool iron, and I cannot wait to see mine. It's pretty darn cool. Okay, so we've got that all cut out. So it's time to lay out our stuff. It is time to lay out our stuff. And you know what I was looking at? I was realizing I am looking at the wrong pattern. I'm looking at my original pattern, which I can't read. OK, so block 10, final. That's what I want. Hey, that is so much easier to read. Perfect, OK. We've got all that. Now it's time to lay it all out. So we have nine rows. And let me take all of this and set this aside over here out of the way. I've got that. I don't need my scissors anymore. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay all of my pieces out right here so it's easy for me to grab. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, you like that, Nikki? I was looking at the wrong thing. But that's OK. I was looking at my original pattern that I submitted to Nicole to pretty up into a professional pattern. There we are. And these. Now these, I'm going to have to separate. Perfect. OK, so I've got all my pieces right here. So I'm going to be taking these and putting them over. No, no, that doesn't sound like me, does it? Come on. All right, let's do this. So let's switch the angle so you can see what I'm doing as I'm laying my pieces out. Let's move this up just a touch, just so you can see everything that's going on. All right, so I'm going to start with row number nine. So I'm actually going to start at the bottom, because for me, it's easier to work from the bottom up. So, but you should be able to see everything. OK, so row number nine, I have one of these pieces. And I am going to be pinning them as I go, because it's just a lot easier to pin as I go. Now, I'm going to group these in groups of two. The reason why I'm doing groups of two is because these are the two that I'm going to be pinning together. 
So it's a lot easier to just go ahead and group it in those groups of two to make my life easier later. I cut something wrong, didn't I? I did. I did. I need four sets because I was looking at the wrong pattern. Now that I'm looking at the correct pattern, I only cut one set of two and a half and I needed four sets. Okay, let's cut three more sets. All right. One, two, three. But it's as easy as that. If you forget, if you don't cut something correctly, it is super easy th to then just fix it, just like I did. There we are. All right, and I knew something was wrong whenever I needed more pieces. And I'm like, they're not there. I wonder where they are. All right, now, in this case, up in row five, oh, yeah, no, I'll get there. I'll get there. I know I, know I like to, to, to jump ahead and get those horizontals done, but I'm going to wait there. I'm going to wait until I get up to there. But thank you. Thank you for the warning. I appreciate it. Okay, so in this case, our seam's going down towards the black, so I need to go up towards the red with this next piece because we want to make sure that we alternate our seams so that when we put them together, we have a perfect seam every time. All right, so let's do this. We've got that one. Beautiful. And then the black we've got there. Okay, so now let's pin these together. What I'm going to do, I know, I'm mixing it up. You believe that? I mean, hello. All right, row number nine, our arrow points to the right. Because it's pointing to the right, we want to pick up that right piece, flip it over that left piece, and then pin that into place. The reason why we want to do this is we want to make sure we set ourselves up for success in sewing and ironing. And you'll see why later. All right, so arrow to the right. We pick up the right over the left and pin it into place. There we are. Right over left and pin it into place. And last but not least in row number nine, right over left, and pin it into place. Now you notice we have a lonely little piece right here. This piece may have gone to a large convention and may need some time alone. That's perfectly okay. It is perfectly okay to be alone and to be by yourself. So we want to take this lonely little piece, we want to just set him aside right there for now. Because it is by itself and lonely, we do want to make sure that we include it in the next pass. So remember, single pieces are fine. Just the next pass through, make sure you include it, just like you include people. All right, row number eight. All right, so row number eight, we've got that one. And then the next one, it looks like our seams go to the left this time. So we have a vertical piece of a black and red. So the seam needs to go towards the black. So towards the black, just like that. And then in this case, we need a black and red like this. And this is going towards the red. So the next one needs to go down towards the white. There we go. And then up towards the white with the white and red. And then black and red towards the black again. Remember to group them up by twos. And then a white and red. A white. Now, I don't have to worry about if this is the right or wrong side of the white because I checked it as I laid my pieces out. I set myself up for future success. You always want to think about future you. You don't want future you to be mad at present you. So make sure you set yourself up. All right, so we have this one's down towards the red, so I need to go up towards the black. And then a black and a black. All right, this case, remember I already said the arrow is pointing towards the left. So because the arrow is pointing towards the left, which piece am I picking up and flipping it over the next one? Am I going left over right? Or am I going right over left? My arrow is pointing to the left. Okay. 
arrow's going to the left. It is left over right. I think Nikki's the only one that is uh, either, and pinned into place, yes, yes, pinned into place. Left over right, pinned into place. Um, I think everyone is either crafting and listening, creating their blocks or listening, or just plain lurking. And that is okay. Left over right, and pin it into place. Whenever you are pinning things into place, if you have a seam in the center, always pin that first. If you have a nested seam, that means you have two seams that line up in opposite directions, make sure you pin that first. It is extremely important in order to get everything together. There we are. That you do those seams first. Thank you very much, silent speaker. I appreciate that. I try to have a running commentary. That way, if you're just lurking, you can still listen and understand what's going on. Oh, you know what I forgot to do when the internet went out? Oh, I forgot to play the music again. I'm like, why is it so quiet in here? Hold on to your there we go. I've got the music back again. Who is this? Sarah Dawn. Sarah Dawn Designs, thank you so much for that raid. So guys, with these raids today, don't forget, we are still doing our giveaways. Giveaways will be done this upcoming Thursday evening. I'm gonna be blinging and getting things ready for Dragon Con. So this Thursday evening, we'll be doing all the giveaways from this stream. So Sarah Dawn, thank you so much for bringing your friends in. I super appreciate it. For those of you that came in with Sarah Dawn, if you have not yet seen me before, Hi, when I get my stream deck together. Hi, I'm Tony. <laughs> I am a professional video game comic book quilter. I do this for a living. Uh, today we are working on our quilt along. We are working on block number 10, Light Mage, inspired by Final Fantasy. And yeah, we're doing a start to finish. Uh, please, if you're interested, please, please, please go follow Sarah Dawn Design. She's amazing, she's awesome, fantastic, and a positive person. You know me, I love positive people. All right, so we are working on our quilt along. Fantastic. Hey, I see some of the people you just brought on in here. Fant I'm looking at these names. That's awesome. Hi, guys. How are you today? Ain, Ain Masnia? Ain Masnia. And Behorn. Fantastic. Awesome. Nope, and that is perfectly understandable. That's okay, Sarah Dawn. Okay, where was I? I was on row number seven. Row number seven, okay. Let's lay out row number seven. Now, after we finish laying all these out, we will take a short break where you can go to the bathroom, you can stretch. Okay, that's towards the black, so the next one's going towards the white with a white and red, perfectly. And of course, Ain Masnia. Oh, oh, insom oh, insomnia. Oh, insomnia. I get it. I get it. Monkey, thank you so much for your resub. I super appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. Thank you, monkey. I love you. Pin right over left, no matter which way. Ooh, no. Oh, okay. See, in Destiny, you definitely want, don't iron whenever your whole row is together. You want to iron as you go. Because if you wait to iron when your whole row is together, you may stretch the fabric more. So something to think about. So it's actually better to iron, to sew and iron as you go. So yes, no, the, um, but the arrows, remember, are important for seams. At least when laying it out, make sure you're doing that right, please. And that is something where you may just need some practice to get a hang of it to do it later on. Okay, so we've got that one, and then black. Yeah, as long as you pay attention to those arrows every single time and do the same thing over and over, you'll get the hang of it and, it's, it's, and you can figure it out. Let's see, red and white. I need to go down towards the black, up towards the white. 
No. <sighs> All right. Let me do this. All right. Black, red, white, white, there, there, there. Okay, I am right. I was like, this doesn't look right. Why does this not look right? Because it's such a small screen, right? Because it's on my phone. There we are. And then white. And white. And black. Perfect. It would be so much easier if I were just to print out these patterns, right? I should, I should have just done that. Instead of trying to do it off of my tablet, and then I forget the tablet. OK, so this is row number seven. Arrows go to the right. Now, the reason why we do it this way is it actually, Destiny also, saves you a lot of time. If you just flip them in the right direction and you immediately iron them, I'm try I know there's lots and lots and lots of reasons why you never want to iron it when it's all sewn together, where well, you want to iron it as you go, and I can't think of any off the top of my head. If anyone else that's in chat knows of any other reasons, why you should iron your quilt as you go and not wait until the row is done. I know that I used to do the same thing. My first couple of quilts, I just made a couple of basic block quilts and I would sew the rows together. I'm sorry, I would, yeah, I would create the rows and then I would iron everything when it was finished. And there were some issues with that and I can't remember what they were. I know there was a lot of I know one of, the, one of the things is you can check it how you go. So if you have any issues, if any pieces are upside down, anything like that, you'll be able to see them right away. OK, row number six. OK, there is that one, that one, and a black and red towards the red, towards the red, with the red and white. Now, this is the most important thing right here, is you want to make sure your seams go opposite directions as you're laying them out. That is a lot more important than the ironing. There we are. We've got that. And then a black and white. And then that's towards the black, so we need to go towards the black with red. There's a lot of little pieces. This part is actually taking a little bit longer than some other quilts. Let's see, that goes towards the black, so towards the white, because we do have all sorts of little pieces. Now, next week's block, Hunting Duck, is really is a cool block. I really, really like next week's block. It's also another simple block. Whoop, did I do that right? Yes. I want to make sure I didn't flip any pieces the opposite direction. OK, and then white, and then black. There we go. Perfect. We've got all that. OK, and the arrow goes to the left. So we want to take our left piece, flip it over our right piece, and pin that into place. Now, after you're done sewing and then you iron them, if you mix up the pieces, it's not a problem because we're going to lay it all out anyways afterwards. Just making sure that those seams point the correct direction, that's the most important thing. And the reason why those seams have to go a certain direction is you want to make sure that you can nest things, you can line things up and nest those seams. go left over right there you are left over right now the next one yes the next one we do have a horizontal piece so I am going to go ahead and do that horizontal piece next so we're skipping ahead 
to the next page to step number five. So whenever you lay out that horizontal piece, now there's two different ways. Last week we actually did the way that the pattern says. We lay everything out first and then do the horizontal pieces and then pin everything. I actually like to do it row by row. To me, I find it easier and better. All right, so number five, we are doing a tan and then a black and red. Row number five goes to the right. So we want to make sure that our, we point it towards the black because our seam goes this way. So we want to make sure it does that way with the arrow. Okay, let's pin this into place. And then we are going to quickly sew it. There we go. Let's sew this. Now, I do have a piece of scrap in here, a piece of scrap fabric. The reason is I am, do what's I am doing what is called chaining. Chaining the fabric. Sorry, my braid hit the mic. Chaining allow does a couple of different things. It speeds up your sewing, but it also locks in those seams. If you were to sew from here, you're going to have an opening, and that seam is not going to be locked. So chaining is something that's important that you may want to consider doing on a regular basis whenever you're quilting. Now, it's not for every sewing project. Chaining is only good whenever you don't have those open seams. So it also replaces the back stitching, so you don't have to go through and back stitch every time. Okay, so we have that piece there. So now let's take a look at row number five. All right, so I've got a black piece and then a black and red. All right, this piece for me goes down towards the red, so the next one needs to go up towards the black with a black and white. And then I've got the black. And then here is my horizontal piece. Okay, so I had the horizontal piece going down, so the next one needs to go up towards the tan with the tan and black. And then I need to go down, black and white, down towards the black. And then a white piece. This is our last white. We're starting to run out of pieces. This means the end is in sight. Okay, this one goes towards the black, so the next one needs to go towards the black as well. And then our black piece. And then a black piece. Perfect. There it is. All right, now in this case, row number five, our arrow goes to the right. Arrow goes to the right. So I'm going to take that right piece, flip it over that left piece, and pin it into place. Chaining is life, seriously. It really, really is. So whenever I first started sewing, I did not understand chaining. And people tried to teach it to me and I went, why? I thought because I had an automatic cutter on my sewing machine, that it was faster to just sew each individual thing and cut it, oops, look what I did. I forgot to group that up. So when I did my groups of two, I actually didn't group it up. All right, so we are to the right. Yes, right over left. Right over left, there we go. So I didn't believe them. I said, why, why? I've got an automatic cutter. Well, I think I took something like three classes with this lady. By the third class, I was chaining. And I didn't say anything to her, I just started doing it. She came over and saw what I was doing and said, see, I knew because you're all about efficiency and speed, that you would pick this up and you would want to do it. Like, yes, no, you're right. You are right. I'm the type of person where I may say no, I may reject something, but then I may go back and think about it and go, hmm, you know what? I do think I want to do this thing. I like this idea. I change my mind quite often. And that's okay. 
it is okay to change your mind about stuff. Just don't be super wishy-washy and everything. Right, Nikki? All right, this is row number four. Row four. Let me bring this down so that's all I see is row four so I don't confuse myself. Because as we know, confusing me is very easy. Okay, and then a white and a black. There we are. My white goes up towards the, oh, wait, nope. This one is a black and tan vertical. And now my arrow goes to the left. So I have to make sure I point it towards that tan. Oh, I must be at the top if I'm, I must be at the face if I'm working with some tans. And white, there we go. And then a black and white towards the white. And then black. And then my arrow goes towards my left. It doesn't seem a lot of pieces, so I'm going to count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, nope, that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, my arrow goes to the left, so I'm going to pick up this left piece and flip it over the right piece and pin it into place. go and then just three more rows and then we will take our quick break now if you are taking this class right now as part of a studio hi there we are we've got that now row number three uh, if you need to catch up and you don't have things like the stripology ruler, that is perfectly fine. Remember, if you don't finish in class today, this video is going up on YouTube, so you can watch it anytime you like. Okay, and this goes towards the white. So the next one you need to go towards the white with red. And then a red, hold on, uh-oh, hold on. Is this another case where I cut too many pieces? No, I didn't cut enough. I needed two one and a half red pieces, and I think I only cut one, because that's, that's what was in the other one. All right, let me grab. It should just be over here, sitting here. Yep. There it is. Perfect. Okay, now where was I? Row number three. All right, so I've got my white. So there's my other red. That's the only problem by looking at a previous version of the pattern. It's not all correct. That was my previous version before testing that I was looking at. <laughs> and white. The music's not playing, is it? I hit play. I'm just realizing it's kind of quiet. You know what, let me shut it down and reopen pretzel again. Because I kind of like having the ambiance of the background music, right? There we are. All right, so let's go to chill and play. There we are. There's our music. Okay, so where was I? White, oh, there we are, we need our black. There it goes, there's pretzel rocks. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, if you like the easy listening music that we are listening to, you can go to the URL that you see in the chat window right, right here and take a look at the music. This music is free to stream, it is pretty cool. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, perfect. Just making sure because I did stop in the middle of that row and I did not want to make a mistake.
That's much better. That's the only problem when the internet goes out, I do have to reset some things. Perfect. All right, this is row number three. So I am going right over left. There we are, right over left. And right over left, and then we have two more rows to go. There we are, right over left. go. If you think you faintly hear a dog barking in the distance, you do. There's actually a vet that's next door to the, uh, the quilt studio. All right, row number two. Row number two. We are getting there. We are almost done. Oops, I am running out of room. So let me move some of these rows down. I got a little bit too generous. If you have a 36 inch cutting mat, it's, it's plenty of room for all nine rows. Oh, thank you. You're right, the bot didn't get reset. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so let me reset my bots. Yeah, don't fix them right on the spreadsheet. Make sure you, keep, you do them in the chat so we have a record of it, please, Nikki. All right, there you go. All right, you can go ahead and fix it. It's up and going. All right, where was I? Row number two. There we are, row two. Okay, nope, it's up, go ahead. Thank you very much for letting me know. I appreciate it, I didn't even think about that. And black and white. And white. There we are, so we've got that one, and that one, and that one. And then black and white, I need to go towards the white. There we go. And then a black. Perfect, and this is arrows to the left. Aw, thank you, Nikki. Wait, why did it? Oh. <sighs> did it not, it didn't open. There we are, try it now. I know, right? Right? Okay, where was I? This is row number two, arrow goes to the left. So this goes this way. So left over right and pinning it into place. There we go, thank you so much. Yeah, you can also look at stream elements and look at the history to see which ones to do. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. All right, come on. Give it, give it, give it monkey. What are you doing? There you are. It was a little slow on that one, but it worked. Oops. I didn't catch the fabric in that. I need to make sure I catch that fabric. Now, of all of the steps for the quilt, for each block, this is the step that actually takes the longest, is laying all of the pieces out and pinning them in place. There we are. All right, row number one. We are almost there. So I need a black, a black. Oh, we're probably gonna have to, may have to re-iron some of these. One, two, three, four. And this is black on top. One, two, three, four. No, I do not, fantastic. And this goes towards the white, so this should go towards the black. 
Perfect. And then this one. All right, so that means we have some leftover pieces. These are all of the pieces that you should have left over. So if you have these pieces left over, and this is actually, there you go. If you have these pieces left over, it is natural, it is fine, it is good. Just take these and set these aside. And this is all going to be part of our special stream of what to do with all your scraps. Perfect, okay. So row number one, our arrow goes to the right. So we're gonna take our right piece, flip it up over that left piece and pin it into place. There we go. Right over left and pin it into place. Perfect. And right over left and pin it into place. And right over left, pin it into place. There we go. All right, so everything is pinned. We have all nine of our rows together. So that means we are almost halfway. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, it means we are halfway. We're halfway done. So. Our next step is to sew all these rows. Once the rows are sewn together, you sew the rows together, and then you square your block up, and that's it. So we're getting there. So everyone, if you got this far, give yourself a uh, pat on the back. And we are going to take a quick break, um, use the potty, get some water, have a drink, get a snack. You know, congratulate yourselves. You guys are pretty amazing. Uh, and I'm gonna give you some bloopers while we take a break. And whenever we come back, we will get those blocks sewn. Okay, fantastic. My mic works, right? Yes, mic is working. We got some audio. We're back, fantastic. Okay, all right, let's do our quilt along. Let's finish, let's keep on going. So we are at the sewing stages and getting my mailbox. I saw you sneak in earlier. Bernadelli, thank you so much for your resub. I appreciate you. You like how Bernadelli triggers the resub whenever I'm not whenever I'm not on the camera, and we are at, with our be right back screen. All right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just shifting down all of my rows so it's easier for me to reach over and sew them. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's move our chair over. Ah. Ah, move our, situate ourselves a little bit. All right, I need my purple thing. Of course, it's sitting just on the other side of the machine, so I can't see it. Of course, right? Of course, of course. All right, so let's do this. And perfect. All right, so again, we are chaining all of our pieces and we are doing one row at a time. In order to be efficient, if you wanna be the most efficient possible, lay them all out, pin them, and then sew them all at the same time. So I'm sewing all of these rows at the exact same time. So after I'm done with row one, I'm gonna take row two. Now, I do have to remember to separate it. Sometimes I forget this step and I just keep on going. So I wanna make sure I separate row one from row two. So that way I know which pieces belong where and it's less work for me later. Future Tony uh, appreciates that. Yes, assembly line. Whenever you assembly line stuff like this, it makes it a lot easier and better. It's more better, more better. There we go. Perfect, okay. And then now I'm gonna take my gypsy 
quilter cutting gizmo, separate my chained pieces. And remember guys, do as I say, not as I do. Please do not sew over your pins. It is a horribly bad habit that I have. Horribly bad habit. It could, I know, right, get in my mailbox when future you thanks past you. Yeah, seriously. Um, when you sew over your pins, you may damage the timing on your sewing machine. You may also break a needle. Oh, that's right, I have a story for you guys. You may break a needle, um, and then the needle could go into your eye, which is not a good thing, not a good thing at all. Um, trust me, you just don't, don't sew over your pins if you can help it. Please, please, please. Do as I say, not as I do. Yes, I sew over my pins. Yes, it's a horrible habit. So, last week, the other day, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna quit. No. I know I understand the risks I'm taking by sewing over my pins. I do not want you to take those same risks, but I understand the risks that I am taking. It's basically what it is. You're taking risks. You're taking risks. Okay, so last week, I think it was last Thursday, I forgot to tell you guys this. Uh, I am currently helping my family insurance agency. Uh, transition to a paperless system. So I'm going through a lot of the files and cleaning them up and removing a lot of the staples in order to make it easier for the scanner to scan everything. So basically grouping everything into policy, um, scanning it, you know, basically getting it ready for the person that's doing all the scanning. So I take the uh, staple remover and I remove a staple that then breaks and flings at me and hits me in the eye. How many times have I sewn over pins? How many times have I broken needles? And I have never in my life had anything hit me in the eye. Luckily, it didn't hit me too hard. Yeah, it was an errant staple. It just went boom, right in my eye. It didn't hit me too hard. Uh, it was sore for about two hours, but by the time I went to stream last Thursday night, I completely forgot about it and it didn't hurt anymore. So, yeah, it was it was attack staples. It was it was attack staples. It was it was just yeah. It, it oh my gosh, seriously. It was attack staples. I I couldn't believe that though. Like I was in shock, like absolute shock. I think I messaged like one or two people, and it's just because I could not believe that it happened to me. I know, right? So. Like you think that I, there's more likelihood of me getting hit in the eye with a broken needle as there is with staple, uh, staple. but no. Seriously, seriously. All right, so what I am doing, now what I'm doing here, it doesn't make a difference which way you have them in order, as long as you keep your sewn pieces the same direction. So you see how I'm making sure that my pieces are the same exact direction as I put them in? Because that is the way that I'm ironing them. And that is how you get the pieces to iron certain ways. So get them in, so make sure, and remember, by doing it now, you're saving yourself time. So this is efficient. All right, we are on row number four. Yeah, now this machine, I do not sew over my pins on my regular sewing machine. This sewing machine, however, is a very inexpensive machine. It is my travel machine. It's not a great machine. If I break this machine, not a big deal, because it's pretty cheap. 
I can just pick it up. In fact, I have like eight of these machines at my house that I use to teach classes. Um, and then when one breaks, I just use it for parts for the other ones. All right, we've got that. There we are, row number three. I'm gonna make sure that I put them facing the same direction because I wanna make sure that I can just grab from here. Come here, pin. It wouldn't pick up. And then I can just slide them down after I iron them. There we are. Thank you so much for picking up that pattern. I appreciate it. I'm surprised the cha-ching sound didn't happen on the screen. I wonder if it has something to do with the internet going down. Normally at least the cha-ching happens on the screen. Fantastic, thank you, Minion Mama. I appreciate that. If you would like to see the Minion Mama's picture, you can just click on that and it will show you the picture. All right. And then this is row number two. And there's something soothing about the sound of a sewing machine. It's just a very nice, relaxing, soothing sound. There we are. So any questions on anything we've done so far? Remember, this is a teaching stream. So I can take questions. I can show you things again if you didn't quite get it. Of course, remember, you can also rewind. And of course, this will be on YouTube starting tomorrow. And push, oh, that's awesome, Minion Mama. Yeah, it is. Um, I think I remember doing that to my mother too when I was young. I went. I like to push the pedal for her whenever she was sewing. It's just a fun thing. It's just a fun thing to sit and push it. It's like, oh, look, I can make a machine go. Because kids are fascinated with that stuff, because they can make the machines go. You know, just with the um, with the motors and how everything works. I have a friend of mine who her and her son go out and they greet the gar... He gets very excited for Thursdays because Thursdays are garbage days. And they get to go out and, and talk to the garbage men and greet the garbage men because they have the best job in the world because of that big truck and because of the big machine. And, they, and the garbage men get offered freezies if it's, if it's really hot outside or hot chocolate in the winter if it's cold outside. She told me sometimes they take her up on the offer, sometimes they don't. It depends on how, how much they've had to do and how, how behind or busy they are that day. Yeah, it's, it's really cute. I, um, I stayed with her when I went to Steve's Sewing um, and Too Many Games, and I, I was there for that Thursday morning, and I'm like, that is just the cutest thing ever. Speaking of Steve Sewing, if you are watching this before November of 2019, I will be at Steve Sewing in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. I believe the third weekend of November. There we are. All right, we've got everything laid out. So we've got everything sewn for the first one. So now let's go back to our pattern and let's see how it looks. So I'm gonna take each row and I'm gonna lay it out. First thing we wanna do, remember, is lock these seams in. So let's sew these seams. And then iron it up. See, I would be afraid, if you didn't iron it each time, I'd be afraid of not having them face the right directions. There we are. Okay, so, oops, 
I really need to set this so I can do it. All right, so seams go to the right. So it goes this way. There we are. Oh, and of course our lonely little piece. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five pieces. So in row number nine, we have five pieces. Uh, we have to make sure we include this lonely piece. Remember what I said. You always have to include this piece right here the next time through. So that means I'm gonna leave this first piece out and take these. So I'm gonna take this right over left because my seams go to the right and pin it into place. There we are, right over left, and pin it into place. If you missed that, yes, I did just stab myself with a pin. It happens all the time. I don't even think, I just, it didn't even hurt. I didn't even realize I did it until I went to pick up my finger and I saw that there was a pin attached to it. Okay, let's iron. Let's lock our seams in. There we are, and then let's iron them up. Perfect, now this is row number eight. There we are. Perfect. All right, and I'm gonna pick this up the opposite way. It's just easier for me to know I'm laying it out the right way. All right, and then row number eight is to the left. So our seams go to the left. So let's lay this out. I'm looking at my pattern while I do this, just to make sure I didn't flip any pieces. And it all looks good, and it does. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have an odd number of pieces here. So I can't just leave out this last piece because this first row I left out this first piece. I wanna make sure this is consistent all the way throughout. So this is left over right. So I'm gonna leave this first one alone and do this one. We're gonna go left over right, and this does have a nested seam, so I wanna make sure that seam is lined up perfectly, and then put a pin in it. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Left over right. Perfect. There we go, left over right. Okay, and then the next one. This is row number seven. Locking seams first. and then ironing. It's funny, my I didn't quite sew it straight for that one. So it's kind of like a little wonky, but that's okay. It will figure itself out. If you would like to see this finished quilt in person, if you're in the Houston area, I will have it at Quilt Festival this year that you can purchase. You can purchase the pattern. All right, so this is number seven, so to the right. So if you would like to purchase a physical copy of the pattern, you can. We've got that. Oh, wait, I, I automatically just started uh, grouping it up by twos and I don't wanna do that. I have to make sure that everything is correct. There we are. Okay, so there. Yes. And 
and then, and then there. Perfect. All right, one, two, three, four, five pieces. Again, let's leave out that first one. This goes to the right, so right over left. I know, right? And it's okay that we're all a little wonky. Remember, everyone has issues. Everyone has problems. It's a matter of what are your issues and problems, and do you have them under control? If you don't think you have issues or problems, well, I hate to break it to you. You do. Okay, let's do the next one. Because you know what? You're human. And let's do those. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oops. There you are. There we go. I may have to get some more water. My water is running low. Yeah, let me grab some water. Ugh. There we go. Now my steam should be better. My steam should be a lot better. Wait, you're more than a little wonky, Destiny? That's okay. That's okay. I still love you. And you know how much I love you, Destiny. You're amazing. There we are. Fantastic. All right, let's pick all this up. And let's lay this out. All right, this is to the left. Seems to the left. I've got that one. That one. That. 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 Perfect. Okay, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have an even number. All right, this is to the left, so left over right. And pin it into place. So Nikki has told me a few times that she hears me say that in her dreams. I personally think they're nightmares. I think I haunt her during, I haunt her, uh, her nightmares with right over left and left over right and pinning it into place. And this, remember, is left over right and pin it into place. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Next. It's a dance step. It may be a dance step. All right, let's lock our seams. It's the, it's the um, oh wait, how, what are we gonna call this quilt? What are we gonna call this uh, dance step? The, it's not the quilt shuffle, the two step. It's the quilting two-step. Because it's left over right or right over left. That sounds like a two-step to me. There we go. Oh yeah, my iron is acting so much nicer to me. So much nicer. Okay, and this is to the right. All right, let's make sure that these pieces are all correct. I didn't flip anything. So far, so good. I can't believe that I didn't completely screw anything up this stream. This is great, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I know I am totally jinxing myself by saying this. Okay, and this is right over left and pinning it into place. It makes your hips wiggle. <laughs> it is the quilting two-step. I can't, I was totally gonna try to like, be a, uh, a country announcer. I, I can't even pretend to do that. I can't, I'm not a voice actor, I can't do it. For an auctioneer. All right, and then last but not least, right over left, and pinning it into place. Now remember, next week we are gonna be doing block number 
11, 11. But two weeks from today, we are taking the week off. It is the week of Labor Day. It is a holiday in both the United States and in Canada. So we're not gonna have a stream that day. We're gonna be taking it off. And we'll return the week after with block number 12 and then the final assembly of everything together. All right, this is to the left. This is row number three. And that looks good to me. To the left, we only have four pieces, so left over right and pinning it into place. For those of you that are doing this quilt along, is this something that you would like to do again? If so, would you do you like this weekly format or would you like a monthly format? Okay, and then row number three. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Monthly works better for you? Yeah. I was talking to Nicole about this, and when we were initially talking about this, she, I really thought we were doing a monthly one. I was like, no, no, a weekly. Okay, so this is row number three. This is to the right. Oops. The only thing is if we set this up as a monthly, we may not be able to do as many pattern releases as I like to do. There we go, we've got that one. And that one, and there, and there, perfect. All right, that is row number three. And, oh, it wouldn't be for another year, Nikki. It's not something that's gonna happen right away. Like, this would not be until at least next year. Okay, so row number three goes to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have an even number, I can just start pinning it. And this is to the right. I had to look at my things again. There we go, to the right. Perfect. Well, I mean, I mean, no, 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 not January, February, not that early. No, I promised Nicole a break until January because I have patterned her out. So I've promised her the break until January before I'm gonna be asking for new patterns again. And I would like to at least release one or two regular patterns before doing another quilt along like this. So I was actually thinking about starting it next summer again. Okay, row number two, this is to the left. Uh-oh. What'd I do? Oh, I just, I, okay, I just picked it up in a different order. Whew, that scared me. I just picked it up in a different order. Okay, and this is to the left, so left over right, and it's an even number, and pin it into place. There we 
go. Let's see, two, three, four. And then I may, if we do another quilt along, I think I may do the streams either Saturday or evening. Just to mix it up a little bit. There we are, and this is row number one. Okay, seams are go to the right. And I've got one, two, three, four pieces. That looks good. All right, to the right, so right over left, and pin it into place. Now, remember, I wanna make sure I'm gonna, I can reach these pieces as I'm sewing them. So after I finish pinning this last row, I'm gonna shift all this down. Go. Okay, let's move all these over and let's shift this down. Now I'm gonna leave these first pieces here and I'm only shifting the pieces that I'm sewing. And then last but not least, there we are. So it's easier for me to reach them. Oh, okay. Whew. Let's put that there. Now it looks like this is one of those blocks where I am gonna have to do an extra pass for some of the rows. Not too many, I think one, maybe two rows need an extra pass. This one does not. This one does because there's four pieces left in this, meaning it's gonna need an extra pass. Oh, I didn't explain it this stream. The, whenever I go through an entire sewing, I call that a pass. So this would be the second pass of sewing. And this one's okay. This won't need another pass. It's funny how and I started to notice this a few weeks ago. The first couple of weeks, we had a lot of people that would pop in and ask all sorts of questions. And now people just pop in. Not a lot of questions anymore. Because as I told a quilt store the other day, really, if you've done one of my patterns, you can do them all. They are all laid out the exact same way. You're using the same exact techniques. Hopefully we explain everything. Um, the only thing that you may mess up is if you flip a piece or if you don't read it correctly on how many pieces to cut. I even do that. <laughs> I mess that up. So it's okay if you mess that up. But it's easy to find, it's easy to fix. So I found, um, I got pictures back from my uh, long armor who is finishing up the quilts for my exhibit. And um, she sent me the pictures for approval to say, hey, how does this look? Am I on the right direction? Da 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 da. I'm like, oh, those are fantastic. I flipped a piece in that quilt. So that is three out of the four that I know that I flipped a piece in. Yes, seam rippers are your friend. It is 
super, super important to invest in a good seam ripper. I personally like the Seam Fix brand. Uh, it has a wonderful eraser at the end that helps get rid of all of your little threads. I know, I know it's my signature. I know. But it's one of those things where it's like, are you kidding me? How am I doing this every single time, flipping these pieces? Man. <sighs> it's okay. That's okay. Any questions, since there's no questions on the blocks, any questions on quilting in general? Because this is a teaching stream, I want to make sure that I, uh, I can teach you. I teach you things. And if I'm doing the same exact thing, teaching the same exact thing week after week, well then you're not learning something new. Ooh, good question, Nikki. High loft or low loft? So for those of you that are not familiar with quilting, um, she is talking about batting. Uh, she is talking, a loft is how thick your batting is. The answer to your question is yes. Um, for different things. It's, it depends upon what you're doing it for. You may want a high loft, a super thick batting. If you, whenever you quilt it, you want things to puff out. Um, or if you want a super, super, you know, big puffy quilt. You may want a low loft batting if you want it easy to quilt. So I prefer in my camera, in my cameras, I'm clicking on the camera. Um, I prefer in my quilts, if you purchase a quilt from me that I have personally made, all of my quilts are low loft because I find it's faster, it's easier and faster to do the quilting with a low loft batting. I also, there's also many different types of batting. You have cotton, you have um, polyester, you have bamboo. There's even a recycled material that you can do. Okay, so in, now we're gonna go back to the pattern. So this is row number nine. I have three pieces left. So what I'm gonna do is use that center piece and flip each of the pieces. Oops, let me go ahead and re-iron that seam that didn't iron all the way. There we go. I'm gonna flip these seams in from the edges and pin it into place. So I flip it left to right on this side and then right to left on that side. And just to remind me, Nikki, what time do you have to leave today? The Geeky Quilter is going to step in. There we are. And then I'll finish talking about the batting. Two, three. All right. Let's lock our seams. You know what? I think we actually may be done before then. Because this one is coming together pretty quickly because we didn't have a lot to cut even with the internet drop. All right, so we've got those. This is going to the left. Let's make sure I didn't continue to screw this up somehow. Nope, that looks good. Okay, so this is to the left, so left over right and pin it into place. Yep, yep, and that's fantastic. We did have a backup just in case. All right, so back to batting. So there's many different types of batting. Um, I personally prefer Quilter's Dream. That is the batting that I personally right now use in all of my things. It is a, a really nice batting. Um, it's just, it's a really, really nice texture. It quilts very, very well. And the type of batting that I personally use is an 80-20 cotton poly batting. So what does that mean? It means 80% of the blend is cotton 
and 20% is polyester. I find that the blend actually gives you the best of both worlds. So it's, you get the warmth of cotton, but the breathability of polyester. Okay, so this is to the right, and I had three pieces, so I'm gonna flip each piece over that center piece. The nice thing about an 80-20 cotton poly batting, because you have that breathability and that warmth, it actually helps regulate your body temperature. So I find I can still use my quilts in the winter time. I'm sorry, not the winter time, the summer time. Of course you wanna use them in the winter. I can use them in the summer time and it actually helps cool me off as well as heat me up in the winter time. There we go. Let's lock those in. That is the nice thing about my tablet versus my phone. My phone keeps trying to go to sleep. My tablet doesn't do that. All right, row four, this is to the left. Okay, what did I do? This is not row four. Yes, it is. I had the pieces out of order. <sighs> to the left. Yep, that's right, great. Okay, and again, I have three pieces. You have Groot on your lap. Which Groot are you referring to? Are you referring to the English paper piecing pattern that you created? Or a different kind of Groot? lap quilt you use coins for so the actual uh, the actual panel quilt that I created and I made and then sent to you yes okay so you know because it's in your lap you see the low loft I see now why you asked that question nice get in my mailbox that is awesome that is fantastic. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is row number five to the right. Come here, pin. There we are. And again, I have a three, so I'm gonna fold this over the center. There we are, and let's fold this over the center. Now, by folding the threes over the center, you're actually saving some time and you're being more efficient. There we go. Four more rows to iron and pin, and then we can do our next pass. Now, when we do our next pass, I'm actually going to pick and choose and only sew the ones, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six to the left and only sew the ones. Oh, hey, look, that only has a two. Yep. Uh, only sew the ones that need another one. So exa for example, I'm gonna sew this one. I'm gonna move this over so I know I just have that one. These that are all ready to go that I only need one more pass for, all I need to do is group them up with another one and then sew them. I super appreciate that getting my mailbox. But I do reward people that are here a lot, and you're here a lot. So that's the whole point of the reward systems, right? I wanna reward those people that hang out in my channel and that are part of my community. If you are here and you're supporting me, you're gonna get free stuff, because that's just what I'm about. Okay, and this is the third, this is to the right. There we are, and that's a three. So let's fold this in, left over right. 
and then right over left. Now don't forget all of the giveaways. And giveaways, we actually give you pixels, which is the stream currency, that how you get free stuff. Um, two things. The giveaways for today will be done Thursday evening. So I know we have at least three from those raids, and I'm sure we have a few more. But they'll be done Thursday evening, whenever I'm doing bling for my Dragon Con costume. Also, if you're going to Dragon Con, I will have the small dice bags there. If you would like to turn in any of your pixels for dice bags in person, you are by you are definitely allowed to do that. So if you would like to turn in 30 pixels for a dice bag, you can do that in person at Dragon Con. If you want to look through your options and pick it there. I do not mind at all. Now, that's probably one of the only conventions that you can do that because I'm not gonna be bringing those dice bags to every single convention. I just happen to have a 10 by 10 corner booth all by myself though. Okay, so it looks like we just have this one. Everything else is ready to go. All right, so let's quickly, whoops, come on, why can I not, there we go, main. Let's sew this one really quickly. And then I'm actually going to keep it on this angle because I will going to group them up and then start sewing the rows. We are almost to my favorite point in my patterns. Oh, it's almost time for me to get rid of the scrap. There we go. Perfect, let me go over here and quickly sew this. Lock those seams in. There we are, and then this is row number two. So this is to the left. That looks good, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, now remember what I said at the beginning of the stream about lonely pieces, pieces that are by themselves. That's important because you're gonna get some lonely rows. So what we're gonna do is let's start grouping these rows up piece by piece. There we go, oops, actually, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there for right now. So there's the first one. There's the second one. There's the third one, there's the fourth one, and then a single row by itself at the end, all right? So we're grouping them up just like we did the others. Now, whenever you have a three like this, when you have it sewn on both sides, what you wanna do is sew one side. Let's free my scrap. Let's put in our other piece so that we can free the one we just did. I'm going to cut it, I'm going to you know, separate it, and turn it around. So this is the part I just sewed. Now I'm going to turn it around and sew the other end. And this allows for better efficiency and allows you just to go faster. I mean, that's the definition of, a, of efficiency, right? Let's go faster. More better. Let's do more better. All right, let's trim this. I am not gonna need my gizmo anymore. And let's separate these out. Take my pins out and lay that right there, perfect. Okay, now this one I actually have two that have threes. Oops, there we go. So I just have to make sure I do both sides. Sometimes I forget. There we go, we've got the other side. And I have one more, Tony. There you are. Nice job not forgetting to do both of them. See, you, you gotta pat yourself on the back now and then. You gotta reward yourself sometimes. Yes, Bernadelli. 
Uh, we started that in February. You could turn your coins into pixels because once a month I make a mini quilt and then give it away. And the only way that you can get tickets to win the mini quilt is with pixels. So I didn't think it was fair that people that couldn't sub um, and that couldn't um, and that weren't lucky in the giveaways couldn't try to win those monthly giveaways. So I decided that yes, you can turn your coins into pixels. Uh, I have to do it, and I'm streaming right now. I physically have to go in and do it because it's a Streamlabs system that is then meeting with my own personal system. So I'm not, I don't do them on Mondays because we're doing the official quilt along right now. So I will probably do it either off stream or on Thursday. So, but don't worry, they're still sitting there. Just like with any Streamlabs redemption, I just have to go and see it. Okay, this is only a single one, right? Yes. Great, let's do this one. Because remember, the Pixels is my own system. Fritz built us a bot, but it's still my own system that does not interact with anything else. All right, there is that one. And this one. And I'm almost done sewing these rows. And then we can start to sew the rows together. Very excited. Sewing the rows together is my favorite part. All right, so our lonely little row. We're gonna take this and we're gonna use it to free the others. And I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay. All right, so let's free this. And let's free this one. And there. Okay. Now, let's take a look at it. So, I'm going to finish ironing the rows. Let's lock those seams in. There we are. And then we're gonna lay this out. So this is row number eight. It goes to the left. There it is. It's, we're getting it. All right, so we're gonna take our bottom row, flip it over the row above it. And you know what? Let me move these over here because I need to start putting my combined rows right here. And you'll see what I mean whenever I flip the camera angle. So let's find our very first, whoa, that one is ironed wrong. My seam right here is ironed wrong, so I need to fix this. It was, if I don't fix it, then my nesting doesn't work. There we are. All right, so flip that, there we are. Now I'm gonna find my first seam where I have nested seams, where my seams are going in opposite directions. And then I'm gonna put a pin in that. And then I'm gonna backtrack and anytime I have a seam, either on the top or the bottom, I put a pin in it. And why is it important that I put pins in every single one of my seams before I start sewing? We are, that was another combined. So I'm gonna backtrack and now do this one. Let's move forward. Now, it is important that you move the fabric around. If your seams don't perfectly line up, well then move the top or move the bottom so they do line up. If you have a little bit too much fabric on the top or the bottom, that's perfectly natural. That just means that you're, whenever you sewed, you didn't sew it perfectly. Now, the, yes, you always wanna make sure you put pins in there so they don't flip. There we are, we've got that. And let's put pins in there. And we're gonna go back and put a pin in that. Perfect. 
And now we have our first combined strip. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it right here. All right. And then that is going to be the farthest away from my machine. So every other one I'm going to put to the right of that one. All right. Let's go ahead and iron this one. Thank you for subscribing <gasps> to. Who's Pop that? Patrick Pirates. <coughs> I, I mean, factory. 19. Excellent prime number. I agree. 19 is an excellent prime number. You know what? I think 19 is my favorite prime number. I don't know why. I've never, I, uh, I used to like 13 for a long time, but 19 has grown on me. Thank you so much for that resub. I super appreciate you, Patrick Pirate. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, so this is row number uh, 987, row 7. So this goes to the right. So that means this goes to the left. There we are. Oh, yeah, that's really starting to line up. Look at that. That's awesome. All right, so let's flip this. And let's find our first nested seam is right here. And we're putting pins in all of the other remaining seams because we don't want those Thank seams to flip. To <gasps> Another one, Azure. Down to the <coughs> I, I mean, factory. Azure Koi. Another 19 months. Another excellent favorite prime number. Look at that, two 19 months in a row. Azure, thank you so much for your resub. I super appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Hello, how are you today? You're coming in at just the right time. We are almost finished with our block of the day. This one's fast. we are. There we go. And let's go back and put pins in these seams. Perfect. And then a pin there. And then a pin there. All right, now we're going to take this and we're going to move it over here next to the one previously. All right, let's take care of the next one. go. And let's iron these the correct direction. Perfect. One more to iron. All right. And this one. Silly face ID. There we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this goes to the right. Nope, this one goes to the left. Nope, to the right. That's the left. I don't know my right to my left sometimes. I can't, yeah. Yep, yep. I think, I don't know what my, I, I, I know. So the Metroid is my favorite, um, well, the Alien Parasite is my, is my favorite one for color because that purple is just freaking amazing and stunning and unbelievable. He's getting there. You know what, Azure? You are absolutely correct because these 18 inch blocks are perfect for throw pillows. You can easily get an 18 inch pillow form or even a 17 inch pillow form, to be honest, because you figure whenever you sew the back onto the pillow, you're gonna lose a half of an inch. So it's actually gonna be a 17 and a half inch. So probably a 17 inch pillow form. I know, right? Like I seriously, whenever I talk to Nicole about designing the next one, I'm gonna try to get some more of that purple because that's just amazing purple. Go. There we go. We got that one. All right, one more to combine, and then it's time to sew rows. All right, so I'm taking this, and remember, I'm putting it to the right. All right, let's do the last one. 
This is actually how I initially got started. So I actually started selling my quilts, but I needed something in addition to quilts. So I actually used to make pixelated throw pillows. The problem with the pixelated throw pillows is people didn't want to pay what I would have to charge. Because you figure this is what, just for the time it takes to put this block together, it's three, one to five, four hours of our time, four hours of our life to do this. Okay, this goes to the left. So this goes to the right. So you figure four hours of work plus materials. Well, materials for this block, let's see. And this is important if you decide to sell your things. So this would be a half yard of black and a quarter yard of white, red, and tan. So that means a yard and a half of fabric, okay? Yard and a half of fabric would be, a. let's be generous and say we got it on sale, $12. Yes. Oh no, you need to pay yourself for time. I am a big proponent in you need to pay yourself, especially because remember, I do this for a living. It is super important you pay yourself. Oh, there we are, this one here. I was looking for the next one that meets it up. So yes, pay yourself, please. So you figure four hours plus $12. Well, if you give yourself an hourly wage, the minimum you should give yourself is, 12, is minimum wage. Because again, you need to pay yourself. So let's assume that I'm just starting out. I'm not very good yet. I'm gonna pay myself $12 an hour. So 12 times four is 48. Plus the $12 for materials, that's not even counting the zipper or the backing, would be $60. I was only charging 50. So I was already cutting myself, and that doesn't even include the pillow form, the, pi the zipper or the pillow form that I put with it. So I was only charging 50, and people wouldn't buy them. Because they said, oh, well, that's too much. I can go down to the local Walmart or Target and pick up a throw pillow for six bucks. Why am I gonna pay $50 for that? Because it's handmade. So unfortunately, it's, uh, the uh, throw pillows is not something that I could sustain and actually make money from. So I decided not to carry them anymore. So then I started to do character throw pillows where I would just do character fabric. Now, I only charged $30 for those because I could buy my things wholesale at that point. So the I actually paid myself, I think, $20 an hour for those throw pillows. And all it was, was assembling the front, assembling the back, and adding a zipper. Well, the problem with that is after three to four years, people had already, done, had already bought all the throw pillows they wanted. So I, I stopped doing those. Throw pillow kits. No, Azure, and the reason why I never did throw pillow kits is because that means that I would have to write instructions on how to do it. And instructions for sewing is completely different for me than instructions for quilting. I do not know how to explain or draw an image of how to add a zipper. Hey, Space Cat, how are you? So yes, no, it is, um, unfortunately, I, it is not something that I ever thought I could feasibly do just because of that. Because if people buy a kit, they will expect to, um, to, to have the instructions as well. Just like with my quilt kits, if you purchase any of my quilt kits, it has all of the fabric and the instructions. Now, there are a few quilt stores that I have taught how to make my kits. So they will be selling those as well. So all quilt kits, you should have fabric and you should have, um, you should have the materials as well. Now, let's talk about general quilt kits. General quilt kits, you're not going to get backing and batting. And there's a good reason for this. And this is the same in my quilt kits as well. 
There's no backing or batting in my quilt kits because it's a personal choice. Remember earlier in the stream, we were talking about the differences in batting. So what I like in batting may not be what you like in batting. So I'm not gonna include the batting in a kit. I personally normally use just plain black fabric for my backing. Well, what if you wanna put something else for the backing? It's also a very personal choice. Okay, so we've got these together. So now we're going to sew our strips. So let's start with, yeah, let's start with this one. Let's start with our middle. So remember, we wanna make sure to lock in our seams. Let's iron this in. Oh, Amicella, remember, these are going to be on YouTube. Feel free to look up YouTube tomorrow and take a look. Oops, hold on, hold on. I've got a problem. Okay, that one seems fine. It looks like it started here. I have a tension issue. So I have to redo these two. So I have to re-sew these two, which is perfectly fine, which means do I have to re-sew this one as well? Yep, I do. Okay, let's go back to that camera. So tension, this is a great teaching moment. Tension issues. I can take these pins out though and re-sew it with no pins. So when you have a tension issue, you do not have to take out all of the fabric. You just have to sew it again to make sure that you have a good seal. Now, there could be a couple of different reasons for tension issues. What's happening is I have, um, sorry, they opened the door to tell me that they were leaving. There we go. Um, I have a, my bobbin is loose, so it's, it's pretty stretched. So what I need to do is redo my bobbin. There we go. And then re-thread the top. If this doesn't fix your tension issue, change your needle. But most of the time, whenever you just have one is looser than the other, most of the time this takes care of it. So anyways, what I was saying on Masella. Yes, remember these are gonna get posted onto YouTube. Um, I would say it would be about the two hour mark. You think Nikki is when we talked about batting? Okay, so let's see how my tension is. Yep, that looks good. Looks good to me. Okay, let's redo this. So yes, every single, because these are official quilt alongs and people are taking classes right now in stores, there are a few stores that could not get it at this time of day. Because they couldn't get it this time of day, they're actually using the YouTube streams as their teaching. So they are bringing up the YouTube and having that teach. I will edit out the break. And of course we had a minor issue with the internet and we had one drop seat, one dropped issue. So I'll edit those out. It was after break time. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yep. So after so it was after the break time area. So because remember our Monday streams are our teaching streams. We are trying to give as much information as possible. We're trying to teach as much as we can. And we're trying to give you that info. Okay, let's go back to that second camera. And now my tension in these is a lot better. It's more better. All right, now let's iron this and redo this. And that I fixed my tension issue. Now, and this is only, it would fix it if your tension's been perfectly fine. So if you've had fine tension, if, if it's been good, and then it starts to act up, well, that means something must have unhooked itself somewhere. Whether it is in the bobbin or whether it's in the top thread, we don't know. Something has gone awry. So a lot of times just by redoing it, it fixes it. There are some early quilts that I made that I had tension issues and I didn't even realize it. Like the loose fabric. I never even realized it. There we 
we are. There's our center. Okay, so we're going to take our bottom, we're going to flip it up. Okay, I'm just looking at my final picture just to make sure that I don't screw this up. Okay, okay, it's good. Whew. For a second there I thought I flipped a piece around here and I'm like, no, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. All right, so we're almost done. So after I iron and pin these two sets of rows, I will finish sewing them and then we get to pin all three rows, to all three chunks together. Now what I'm doing when I'm taking my fingers and doing stuff like this, I'm moving the fabric. So I'm making sure that I move it so that my nested seams line up perfectly before I put that pin in there. So use your fingers to feel these seams. If your seam is off, it means that you didn't feel it right. So feel the seams. Make sure that they line up before you put that pin in. Oh, come on, get over. I'm moving the whole thing. Get over there. No, well, I gotta pick it up and hold the bottom fabric and do it. There we go. You wanna make sure these line up. There we are. There we go. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. There's our top. And let's iron this. There we go. And then iron this open. Now, whenever you are ironing your rows, the entire quilt, all up until now, we were really, really concerned about how we were ironing everything, right? Well, at this point, it doesn't matter. It does not make a difference which way you iron your seams. If you iron them up, if you iron them down, if you iron them open, whatever. It does not make a difference. It is not going to add any extra bulk to the back for your quilting. Just, and you don't have to line things up anymore. All of your worrying about arrows and lines and ironing is done. Okay, so it looks like that goes here. Now, it looks like my top is a little looser than the bottom. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stretch this just like this and then find that middle point and put a pin in it. Let's come back over here. And let's stretch this a little bit and put a pin in it. There we go. Perfect. Uh, yes, Amicella. Uh, once it is, com once the quilt along is completely finished, the patterns will be available as a group. So you won't be able to purchase. So let's say if you wanted to do what um, someone said earlier, um, Azure said, and have a pillow of white mage and pillow of black mage. You can't buy just those two blocks anymore. You can only buy the package of everything together. So they will be available when the quilt along stream is done just as a package. All right, let's go ahead and sew these rows. So that's a good question. One, two, three, and I'm sewing all three. Remember, we left that one in. That lonely little one that was all by itself, it's gonna get included now. There we 
R. Perfect. All right, let's take our pins out. Oh yes, con season. Normally con season ends for me right after New York. This is going to be the first year that I am going to have a booth at Quilt Festival in Houston. So, because I have a booth at Quilt Festival in Houston, my con season doesn't end until the middle of November. So much fun, right? Okay, let's do this. Uh, that, so Quilt Festival is the first weekend of November. It actually starts on Wednesday the 30th. So Wednesday the 30th is preview night. Congratulations, you have just followed Quiltoni. Eris Blade, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate it. All right, so there's that one. Remember to lock in those seams. Yes, and if at any time you want to see my convention schedule, you can go to my website, quiltoni.com, or if you're in my Twitch, you can do exclamation conventions, and it will give you exact dates. There we are. And let's lock in our seam before we iron it. We are almost done, everyone. I think this block has gone the fastest. It's not as simple as the coins block was, but remember, we didn't have a lot to sew, uh, we didn't have a lot to cut because we were pulling from previous blocks. Okay, so just like before, we have three pieces. So this means we're gonna use our center one as our base. So we're gonna take our bottom one, we're gonna flip it up, and we're gonna pin it into place. So let's find where our first nested seam is. And we'll go back and pin. There we are. Let's do that, come on. There we are. All right, so remember, I'm finding all of those nested seams. Whoops, let's throw that away. That pin broke when I was, well, bent when I was trying to do it. We're finding those nested seams, we're putting pins in there, and then I'm going back and pinning seams that are not being nested, seams that are laying by themselves. Because remember, we don't want them to fold up while we sew. And that's important because if these seams flip and, and fold up while we're sewing, we're adding extra bulk to the back of your quilt. And if you quilt it or you send it to a long armor to quilt, it's going to be harder to do. It's not a good thing to, it's not a good thing to do, trust me. What? Did I hit that? Man. My finger brushed the end. Hey, at least I discovered it as soon as it happened. Yes, 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 I'm a pro streamer. Pro streamer, people, pro streamer. Okay, so now let's take our top and let's fold it down just like this. And of course I put it on the regular one. So we're taking our top and we're folding it down just like that. Let's turn it over so that I can pin it. There we are. Oh, I just brushed my, uh, my, I've got a portable stream deck on my phone. 
So I brushed the wrong seam with my finger. I didn't break anything. Uh, Mama Bears, I am finishing up though, so we are finishing soon because this is a set stream with a set goal for our quilt along. Um, if you wanna go back and watch, these videos are available on Twitch or they'll be up on YouTube starting tomorrow. Remember, if you ever wanna see my stream schedule, you can find it on my social media and in my Discord when I remember to put it there. But it's always on my social media. Right now it is on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook. All right, so we've got this pinned. We are almost done. We only have two more sides to sew. And then we get to iron it and then square it up. Now, is it important that you square your blocks up right now? No. In fact, in the final instructions, I do say, if you have not yet squared your blocks, square them now. Is it important that you square your blocks, period? Yes, you should always square your blocks. It is super, super important. If you do not square your blocks, then your measurements may not work out. I used to think that um, I didn't have to square my blocks. I was like, well, why? I'm just taking some fabric away. What if I want it to be bigger? Yes. Uh, Mama Bears, yes, like I said, we are doing our official quilt along. So every single Monday, this is our 10th week of doing it. We are doing a different block. So I am at a quilt store right now teaching to a class and to teaching to people around the world that are streaming this and will be streaming it on YouTube. All right, so let's do this. Oh, then they'll be in circles. Yes, yes. All right, so let's take all of our pins out. And then we're going to iron, lay the block out. There we go. Beautiful. Let's flip it around the other way to sew the other side. You know what? I did not lock my seam into place. I am having issues with ironing it. So I'm going to flip it on the other side just to get it started. There we go. So now, there we go. Much better. It is more better. Perfect. Okay. Let's do, let's see if this is at least 18. It is, it is at least 18. It is. All right, let me unplug my iron so it can cool down for whenever I leave. And cut our blocks. All right, so we're going to, we're going to square our block up. Remember, I just went over how important it is to square your block up. If you have a large mat like this, it is super easy to square a block up. All you do is make sure everything is laid out nice and flat and you center it between the zero and the 18. Now let's make sure that our quilts are straight. So I'm actually going to be angling it depending upon where a lot of my rows. So I'm looking at this and this, my seams, and I'm measuring my seams and I'm lining them up along the edges. That looks pretty centered to me. All right, so let's cut the right. There we go. Now I'm gonna turn this over. 
All I'm going to do at this point is make sure that this is perfectly lined up on the left hand side right along the zero. If this is lined up perfectly along the zero, everything else is lined up. And then I'm going to take it, whoops, that didn't work. There we are. And smooth this down. I forgot to hold it while I smoothed. Because we're going to make sure that this is the correct size. And let's trim that. And then now let's do the top and the bottom. So we're going to make sure it's perfectly lined up along that top and along that bottom. And then I'm going to center it between the zero and the 18. There we go. And this is why whenever you have some stretchiness, you see the wonkiness of this, how it just kind of goes woo with this fabric? That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly natural. Let's go ahead and turn this again. There we go. And let's lay all this out. And our last cut for our squaring it up. There we are, perfect, okay. This is our block. Everything is all lined up and it's squared up is an 18 inch block. And this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is our light mage, start to finish. So thank you very much for being here with me. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for making this with us. Now, don't forget, next week, next Monday, is block number 11, Hunting Duck. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you've already done it, you can just go on to the next video. Or, of course, if you want to watch any of the other previous videos, you can always go back and watch them. So thank you again very, very much for hanging out. We are going to go raid somebody. Um, Nikki actually has done her research and has made some suggestions. So I'm going to go ahead and pick someone on the list. We're going to raid. Please, please, please join us on the raid. We're going to go raid someone amazing and positive. Uh, and we are going to raid someone that is PG. So if I'm on in a public place, you don't have to worry about changing the channel while your students are finishing up. So thank you again for joining us. I will be back with the quilt along next Monday with the hunting duck and of course my regular Twitch stream this Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. We're gonna be blinging some stuff for Dragon Con and doing the giveaways from today. It's gonna to be a lot of fun. So thank you again. Please stick around for a few moments. We are gonna go raid someone. I appreciate you.